to have premarital sex. It's okay to cheat or to kill if these things are part of your value system and you have clarified these values for yourself. The most important thing is not what values you choose, but that you have chosen them yourself freely and without coercion of parents, spouse, priest, friends, ministers, or social pressure of any kind." Unquote. It is such that secular humanism proponents in the government schools, the teachers whom we can thank for remolding the values of these next generations. When the government national child care bill is passed, it will be a great day for humanists and proponents of world peace. What wonders we can achieve once we have the attention of the nation's preschoolers for six to nine hours a day. Look what we have already accomplished with the older age groups of America's youth. As I hinted earlier, this new society based on the deity of man will demand a new kind of law enforcer. Remember I told you? They believe that man is in a state of becoming. Becoming what? A god. He says, as I hinted earlier, this new society based on the deity of man will demand a new kind of law enforcer. One of our educators said to me some weeks ago, America's religious zealots of the past would be shocked at the changes the people have allowed. She was correct, for after all, it was James Madison that said, quote, We have staked the whole future of American civilization not upon the power of government, far from it. We have staked the future upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to sustain ourselves, according to the Ten Commandments of God, unquote. Ah, but it is a new day, and we are fast proceeding into the 21st century. Americans no longer wish to assume the responsibilities of governing themselves. Happily for them, there is a whole new generation of very dedicated leaders and enforcers in government to see that they are cared for. Let me address for a moment the question of police manpower. As the citizens relinquish, out of fear, more of their rights, more enforcers are required to regulate and supervise the people's activities so that they remain safe and peaceful. Who would have thought 100 years ago that the integration of fear of literally everything would have been the answer to establishing the New World Order? Credit for this innovation goes to the free thinkers of the last generation. And folks, if you think he's wrong, just look at yourselves. Look what you've put up with. Look what you've allowed to happen. Look at the state our nation is in. Look at the fact that we've already lost most of the Bill of Rights, the portion of the Constitution known as the First Ten Amendments. You all file and pay income taxes, which you are not required to file or pay. You do everything out of fear. And that's why you're known as the sheeple. Most of you. Not all, but most, without any doubt. Most of you, that title fits like a handmade pair of Italian shoes. It's very comfortable, isn't it? Isn't it? Now the older generation, known as peace officers, servants of the people, might not so readily have adopted nor fit into this nor new order of things. Fortunately, this has not posed too great a problem due to the fact that they are rapidly being replaced through natural attrition, in effect death or retirement, and now Hillary's running around the country, folks, wants to open a dialogue on euthanasia. Timely, isn't it? I continue. The next seven to eight years will see the last of them removed. 
At the same time, police agencies are of necessity attempting more and more to screen out before hiring those prospective officers who believe in the old religious superstitions. This is wise because these zealots will not do the things that will be required of them under the new system. Those remaining police officers who openly profess a belief system steeped on old-world religious fundamentalism can be and are being phased out on any number of charges such as can be substantiated over time or with the help of a little innovation on the part of new management. And we believe that this organization Aid and Abet may be the organ used to identify those police officers. I continue. Before I continue, I better clarify, folks. We believe that, and we have good grounds for our belief. However, we cannot prove it. You must make up your own mind, yourselves. I continue. Some of these old-time officers complain that this type of job discrimination is unconstitutional and immoral. But we know they are wrong. Under situation ethics, all things are moral as long as they promote the goal. Therefore, they are not being removed for any evil cause. They are incompatible and simply non-functional for the duties that will be required of them. You might ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, what are the duties that will be required of them? I think you've already seen some examples at Ruby Ridge and Waco, Texas, and many other places. And I go on with the letter. I feel I need to say again that if a professional police officer must lie against those who violate the law, then it is moral. The same is true when government judges and attorneys withhold evidence and witnesses from the jury to win their cases. When a politician lies to win an office or makes deals that promote the new order, it is moral. Let me tell you what is truly immoral. I will use the issuance of traffic citations as only one example. True immorality is when five out of ten good upstanding citizens take the witness stand, swear an oath to their God, and then proceed to fabricate lies to get out of their tickets. This our enforcement officers witness daily in court. To them, this is not only immoral, but highly hypocritical. The enforcer's dishonesty helps society as a whole. If a government agent lied for personal reasons, then it would be immoral. If done for the betterment of mankind, it is not, and that is the most important lesson I bring you today. It is one thing when a leader or agent of government has to lie or otherwise deceives his subjects. It is quite another when an ordinary individual from among the masses, quote, bites the hand that feeds him, unquote, by lying to those who are bringing salvation in this brave new world. Do we see this important difference? The old world understood that it was the greatest of sins to lie or to deceive God. The generations of devotees that wish to enter the new world must likewise be brought to the understanding that it is the greatest of sins to lie to deceive their new God government. Any such disloyalty would surely hamper the progress of those engaged in ushering in the glorious new world order. We are not concerned with the few who may resist this new order, for out of pragmatic necessity their fate has been amply allowed for in the master plan. What we are most concerned about at present is that the obedient masses be made to understand that it is detrimental to progress for them to suggest that their supervisors wallow under the pressure and futility of the antiquated superstitions, morals, and dogma of the past. There will be some difficult changes facing the person entering this new society. On these issues, however, we can assure the people there will be no compromise. Thank you for listening, 
May the blessing of the new order come swiftly upon us. So mote it be. So mote it be is taken directly from the initiation ceremonies of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. And you will hear it nowhere else, ladies and gentlemen. Whoever wrote this was a highly degreed Freemason. 